the Lord. It, and also, it's a blessing to have Sister Jean back with us. We miss you, Jean. It's now time for this morning's message. Let's go before the Lord. Father in heaven, we love you. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us the ability to, and the freedom to meet together, to congregate together, to worship you without fear of persecution. There are people in other states where their churches are closed. There are people in other countries. The only place they can come together are in homes, secret, in a secret fashion. We thank you, Lord, for the freedoms of America that you have granted, that you have given to us. We pray, Father, that we will honor these freedoms and be, always be thankful for them. And Lord, as we sit here now, we pray that all of us will be able to hear your word, that, that we will be able to hear what we really need, that your word today will not come back void, but rather will grow us will challenge us, will give us more understanding. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. We've had a series the past couple of Sundays, and it was talk and the topics were all about knowing Jesus. The first one that we started with was understanding the beginning of his ministry. And then from there, understanding the power of Jesus, and then from there we understood the teachings. Well, today, if you notice, we changed the color of the fabric on the cross. We had a white fabric that was there before, and today, and we pray that this will be here for some time, we have a crimson, scarlet fabric that's on the cross today, because the topic that we are going to be talking about is the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. It is a very important topic and a very uh, important topic for Christians to understand for themselves and be able to explain to others the power and the need and the holiness of the blood of Jesus. Um, I broke this up in three topics, in three areas for this, this morning's message. The first is mankind's great need for the blood of Jesus. Then the second is the power of the blood of Jesus. And then the closing that shows the good news of the blood of Jesus. The first is in the book of Leviticus, chapter 5 and 6. You're welcome to turn there, or you're welcome just to uh, follow along as I turn there. In the book of Leviticus, we see instructions given by God to Moses, and in turn, from Moses to the people of Israel, to God's people, in how to deal with sin. We understand that offerings were made to handle, to deal with, to cover sin. And you see uh, the topics there, the guilt offering. And then you see later the sin offering. Animals were killed for, because of the sins of the people. Their life essence was shed to cover over, symbolically, the sins of the people. Why is that? In the verses today, you're going to find that the wages of sin is death. There's a horrible consequence because of sin. Sin is something we cannot play with because it will cost our life, our soul. It is very damaging. And very often, I think, like people 
we try to get close to the fire without getting burned. Sin will burn you. Sin will destroy your life. It will destroy your family. It will damage your children. It will damage relationships and friendships and on and on. Sin didn't begin in the book of Leviticus, but rather sin began at the very beginning with Adam and Eve. When they disobeyed a very simple commandment that God gave them. Don't eat from a particular tree, of the, the tree of the knowledge, okay, of good and evil. And that's the one tree that they targeted after they were told what the rule was. And we talked about this before, that the Garden of Eden wasn't a small area. I'm sure it was a great, beautiful garden. And Adam and Eve, they just kept on getting closer to that tree. And Adam, he should have done the right thing by taking his wife and shepherding his wife and going somewhere far away from that tree. On the other end of that garden. Just kept getting close. They allowed the temptation to be in front of them, and eventually one gave in, then they both gave in. And that was the beginning of sin, and that was the downfall of man. And we see the blessings slip out of the hands of humanity. Because at the beginning, death wasn't part of creation, death came with sin, scarcity came with sin. Adam and Eve were thrown out of the garden, and then they had to grow everything themselves. Before that, God gave them everything. Killing wasn't part of life. Killing came after sin was at, came into the world. Mankind was living with nature before that, and it wasn't, there wasn't any savagery there before so mankind's great need was the blood of Jesus to mend, to cover, to fix the problem. The Lord knew that we needed something. And so for the time, he allowed the life of animals to uh, cover the sins of the people. Not to erase their sins, but to cover them. I'd like to now turn to Romans For the wages of sin is death. We earn something by what we do. If you don't work, you don't eat. And if you sin, death is waiting. But if you are right by God, there's a great reward. So basically, in everything... There is a consequence, a reward. There is an outcome for everything that you do. Sin has an outcome. With sin, you earn something. And what you earn is death. Physical, spiritual, emotional, it damages our lives. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. What's the gift of God that offers eternal life? That's through Christ Jesus our Lord. It's his sacrifice. It's his life that was given for us. His blood that was shed for us on the cross. 
I'd like to now turn you to Hebrews 9, 19 through 22. When Moses had proclaimed every command of the law to all the people, he took the blood of calves together with water, scarlet, excuse me, with water, scarlet wool, and branches of hyssop, and sprinkled the scroll and all the people. He said, This is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you to keep. In the same way, he sprinkled with the blood both the tabernacle and everything used in its ceremonies. In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood, and without, this is the main part of this portion right here, and the most important part of this reading portion, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. In the Old Testament, a person could not have a right relationship with God unless they confessed their sins and a life was shed, was forfeit for the sins that they committed. And God allowed the life of an animal to cover for that. Later, the life of Jesus made things right once and for all. The Bible says, once and for all. And that's why we no longer sacrifice animals for humans. Because the life of Jesus, the spotless Lamb of God, the Holy One, was shed on the cross for the sins of all people for all time. The power of His blood. Let's look at Isaiah 118. I so appreciated um, what I heard Sister Marsha share this morning, because I always see that in God's Word, and I always tell people who say, they, they try to find an excuse, oh, no, no, God is... God wants to judge people. God isn't the God of love. Then they're wrong. If you read the Bible, if you sincerely read the Bible, you'll continually find that God is pleading with mankind to turn away from sin. And I believe I heard you say that this morning in your Sunday school class, and I so appreciated that. And that's refreshing that other eyes can see what I saw. And see what I read. Because I see God's mercy, not just in the New Testament, but in the Old Testament as well, throughout the whole Word of God. God doesn't need us, but God loves us. God knows that sin is not something to play with. It is something damaging and hurtful and will cost our life and cost our soul. So the Lord pleads with humanity that He loves. And He's continually saying, come away, come away, come away from that. And we see that right here in Isaiah chapter 118, where He says, look, come away, I have the solution, and I can make things right. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Truly, from the very beginning, He's our Heavenly Father. He loves us. He's like this, this wonderful dad. He says, look, 
We can take care of things. Come here. Let's talk. Though your sins are like scarlet, if you've ever gotten blood on your shirt before, or on your clothes in any way, it's so, that's it. You probably basically have to throw it away. You can't get it out. But now we have different detergents and so forth. But back in the time, back in the day, we didn't have those detergents that could really get blood out. And maybe even still, you really can't get it out properly. But it's so deep. And it stings. And it penetrates and it doesn't come out. And the Lord says here, Though your sins are like scarlet, that stain is so deep, they shall be as white as snow. The Lord God had the plan. The Lord God had the plan. Jesus was on his way to take care of things once and for all. Here's the difference. When the animals were the sacrifice, at that time it was a symbolic act, and it was then your humility and your acknowledgement of what you did wrong, and you were allowed to use the life of that animal to cover what you did wrong. But later, the life of Jesus... His holy blood that washed us clean, that removes the stain, God no longer acknowledges, will recognize, will say to us, that is something you did wrong, and because of that you deserve hell. No. According to the word of God, that blemish, that stain, that guilt that you have, you can be rid of. Because the blood of Jesus removes it. When you ask Jesus to come into your heart and life and say, Lord, please forgive me. And that's what he will do. And that blemish and that stain will be removed. The Lord God says that he will remove your sin as far as the east is from the West. He will not acknowledge that from about us any, any longer. He will not bring it to his mind. The devil, though, he'll always remind us. He'll always want to say, you remember what you used to be like? Remember what you used to do? Remember? Remember? Why is that? Because the devil is the accuser of the brethren. He is the accuser of the people, of humanity. He will bring about all the old garbage. But we have to have this faith in God's Word. When you know it, when you read it, you have to remind yourself of it. And say, Lord, this is what you said, and I believe it, and I'm standing by your promise. And then you reject what the enemy brings before you. So the power of the blood of Jesus. What can remove the stains of sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. A wonderful classic hymn. There's another part of the blood. How powerful it is. And we saw symbolically in the Old Testament when the angel was given the assignments that anyone who did not have the blood of the lamb on their doorposts when the Israelites were in Egypt as slaves after all the many plagues that God sent over Egypt finally the angel of death basically came there and anyone who did not have the blood of the lamb on their doorpost lost their eldest son on that night. The power of the blood. God saves us from eternal death because of the blood of Jesus. According to John 3, 16 and 17, I'd like to read that for you now.
For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. We already stood condemned before God, but because of Jesus, we were able to be free from this condemnation if we believed in Jesus Christ and accepted this wonderful sacrifice. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world. But people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. So why does a person reject this precious gift? Because their deeds were evil and they loved evil. And there will be a great judgment for those people. Everyone who does not everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Only Jesus is perfect. And the reason why we're able to come with joy before the Lord is the righteousness of Jesus covers mm. his children. Covers us. When you have become saved by the blood of Jesus, by accepting him, his righteousness covers you. And now you can go to the very throne of God in prayer, in joy, in repentance, whatever it is, whatever your problem is, you can easily, quickly go to your room, go to your knees and pray to God because of the sacrifice of Jesus. Amen. You could go to the very throne of God because of this. Amen. In closing, I'd like to now read for you Romans 10, 9 through 13. Many, many books and the whole Word of God teaches us so much about the great depth and understanding of the precious blood of Jesus. And I'm trying to give you a very simple message today about a great, wonderful topic. And I, and I pray that I'm giving you the most significant verses that at least can give you a path if you wanted to learn more. I'd like to now read for you Romans 10.9. Through 13 that shows you the good news because of the blood of Jesus. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As, script, as Scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. And according to the book of Acts chapter 4, there's only one name given to man by which we can be saved, the name of Jesus. Amen. That's how powerful the name of Jesus is. That's how wonderful and powerful and mighty this good news is that we have the message that saves us, that redeems us, 
that gives us a new life, that frees us from the past, that allows us to no longer be what? Under the power of sin and guilt. The Word of God teaches us that Jesus came to free us from the power of sin and guilt. And in verse 13, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Let's close with a word of prayer. Mighty God, Heavenly Father, we love you. And we thank you, Lord God, for your precious sacrifice that you gave to us. The wonderful Savior and Lord that we have, Jesus Christ. His blood that allows us to have a new life. That allows us to be free from the past. Allows us to have a beautiful future that's in heaven. We thank you, Lord God, because we are people that didn't deserve this gift. But you have given us grace, a, a gift that we didn't earn. And we thank you, Lord, for this precious blood that was shed on our behalf that paid for the debt that we owe. Lord God, give us this comfort and give us this joy that we can understand fully and that we can share with other people in a way that they can understand because there are many people in this world that are looking for hope. There are many people in this world that are looking for a way that they can be free from things that are burdening them or oppressing them. And they want to be free from the bondage that the enemy has a hold on in their lives. So Lord God, help us be this ambassador of yours that we can reach people and tell people how they too can be saved and that they can turn to the word of God and that you can continue to grow them and mature them and give them these wonderful promises that can free them from whatever they're going through. We thank you, Lord, for your people that are here today. We pray, Lord, your blessing upon each one of them, a blessing upon their homes, a blessing upon their health, a blessing upon their jobs. Lord God, there are people here who may have come with burdens on their hearts. We pray, Lord, that you will help them with whatever they're going through and give them this faith that truly they can put these burdens at your feet knowing that you have all authority and that you love them so much and that you only want good for them. And Lord God, help us to be students of your word that we can learn and grow in the promises that you have given. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.